The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 20 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets in negative territory to kick things off. You got the Dow futures negative by about 147 points right now, trading at 38,782 SP off about 15 points, off three tenths percent, 5355. You get the NASDAQ futures right now, negative by about 56 points, similar to the SP, off about three tenths percent as well. You jump over to crude. We got crude right now. Up about 28 pennies, $78 in the price of crude as it continues to climb on crude. Gold contract, <clears throat> excuse me, up $5 this morning, trading at 23.32. That's two tenths percent. And bonds, basically flat right now, but you're talking about a 10 year yield of 4.45%. 4.45%. Pretty remarkable where we sit. And we come into Fed Day tomorrow. So we got some pretty interesting action coming down the line. We have CPI out tomorrow morning. We have the Fed meeting beginning today, that meeting continuing tomorrow, of course, an announcement 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. We have a press conference that follows at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. All our expectations are they do nothing. It'd be a shock and a half. It's not going to happen in terms of any cuts tomorrow. The only question now is whether they're going to cut maybe September. Maybe November and maybe December. Do we get any cuts at all throughout this year? We will find out. Now, this morning, uh, Thinkorswim's got some problems, man. They're talking about it in the Tiger's Den. Cannot pull up my Thinkorswim platform right now, as our man Z puts it. Always a good idea to have a couple brokerages if you can, because it's pretty remarkable. You're talking about 17 minutes prior to the market open, and you have uh, Thinkorswim and Schwab having some big time problems right now. Cannot get into my Think or Swim platform. That was actually the reason we had a little bit of a delay to kick off the program. Uh, some are in there in the den. Some are not in there in the den right now. I had a restart. Didn't get it done. We'll see if we can get it done. We'll see if we can get it done at the break. Our man Jacob Shoop's going to join us at 930 as usual. Look forward to that conversation. We'll talk a little bit of Apple with our man Jacob. Pretty interesting action for Apple, right? Trading lower yesterday on their Worldwide Developer Conference. Elon throwing himself into the mix as usual in a pretty usual fashion. But what do we got? We got Apple yesterday. Just taking a look real briefly. Apple yesterday. 193.12, you're down almost 2%. Today, you're basically flat 193.23 in the pre market for Apple shares. But yeah, they did not like that action, man. We'll put it back on the five day. There was yesterday's action, right? You trade lower. We trade lower in the afternoon as well. I think that's right when things began at 1 p.m. I think it was a 10 a.m. Pacific time beginning. We'll talk to our man Jacob. He's got it all covered. But yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. Um, and we'll talk about that conversation when we talk to Jacob coming up at 930. But we'll see if we can get into Think or Swim, man. We'll see. We're going to try again at the break. We're going to come back, folks. We're going to talk a little bit of Fed. All right. A couple of headlines here. Higher for longer. We're going to talk a little bit about the dot plot ahead of tomorrow's board meeting for the Fed and their decision at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back this morning. So, yeah, Thinkorswim's got some problems, man. They're sure they're running around that office. Cannot get into that platform just yet. And we got, what, 12 minutes to go until the opening bell? It's going yesterday, and I know we got uh, similar issues happening in the Tigers then. So, Thinkorswim, now a Schwab product. And, yeah, just keeps erroring out no matter what. I restarted my whole computer. So, if you're dealing with some woes out there, you're not the only one. And, boy, they got to get that under control. Pretty unacceptable that that happens in this day and age that they can be down when you think about the impact that that can have. Um across the board right markets right now negative territory dow off about 131 points s and p's off about 15 to get the nasdaq slightly in the red oil backing off a bit to be flat and we got gold somewhat flat as well you jump over and you got the euro us dollar basically flat as well how about that yen right 157 on the us dollar yen we'll talk to our man teddy kegstad tomorrow as we always do always an interesting conversation um boy you talk about yen weakness dollar strength on the heels of what on the heels of a strong dollar on the heels of higher for longer interest rates. Now, we've gone over before, but the fundamental nature, right? You have higher interest rates in the U.S. In order to access the higher interest rates that the U.S. is paying, you need to get dollars to buy dollar-denominated bonds, which are paying those interest rates, demand for dollars staying higher. And, yeah, that's probably going to keep a bid in that dollar, at least for some time, man, as it seems to be the case that we are going higher for longer, man. And this economy can handle it, like I was talking about on yesterday's program. So we got a couple of um, articles out here. The first one, higher for longer stance hits firms that expected the rate cut. Yeah, that one is for sure. All right. Um, I was reading a couple articles yesterday just in terms of the cost of capital, et cetera, right? Cooling prospects for business equipment sector. Okay, the index of business conditions conditions and confidence has fallen. You see a little bit of dip from where we were in April to where we are right now. Now, the one I want to get to, though, all right, how about this one? Capital expenditures for U.S. manufacturing. How about the forecast? 
How about that forecast when you're talking about where you were for 2024? Capital expenditures for U.S. manufacturing reported annual increases in the 2024 forecast basically flat when you're coming into the second half of this year, right? And why? Well, it's the cost of capital, man. Yeah. Only a 1% increase in capital outlays this year, down from its December 2023 estimate of almost 12%. So the May 15th forecast is only a 1% increase in capital, down from its December 2023 estimate of almost 12%. Now, the number that was in 2023 was 14.9. The number that they're looking for in the first half of this year, 11.9. Yeah, you talk about a, a drop-off, man. Um, investors are pricing in about 1.5 rate cuts. Now, we jump to the next article talking about rate cuts, okay? This article, also from Bloomberg, headline there, bond traders will follow new Fed dots all the way into 2025. And what it basically talks about is we may get one cut, we may get two. Okay, we're at five and a quarter to five and a half percent right now. There is some room for the Fed to cut and still make the case that they are in a restrictive policy, okay, that their rate is restrictive to the economy because we're so high we're at five and a half percent but what i think you need to wrap your brain around okay which is what i'm trying to wrap my brain around which i think is the correct assessment here is that this is not going to be like before things are different this time as they like to say are they we'll find out now things can change but what's hanging out there all right maybe they're going to let me into think or swim as we speak we're trying if we do get the cuts it's going to be for dire reasons oh i think they're letting me in for those that are trying think or swims booting up we'll see if they get me in here it looks like i finally got a little bit of progress nice of them to let me in six or seven minutes yeah there you go all right hold on they got me in give me one second here and it seems like they got some people were able to get in some people were not but either way we are in now if you were having trouble just close down that platform and bring it back up. I didn't have to restart. I just had to close it down and bring it back up. But nonetheless, the platform is back up seven minutes before the open. Uh, back to the article here. We don't need to cut rapidly. There has not been a time before where you might see a much more shallow need to cut. Now, you talk about the implied number of quarter point cuts by December. Okay, this is the dot plot. And this just kind of shows you how rapidly things have changed. Towards the end of 2023, remember we were talking about six to seven cuts? Six to seven cuts. Well, that changed down to four. Then it changed between three and four. Then it went to two and three. And now we've been stuck between one and two cuts basically since April, okay, is the number of cuts they're looking for by December. And this just shows you how that shift has taken place. Getting down a little bit further, okay, Trying to get the quote here. We'll find it. What they talk about, which is what I agree with here, is that you may see a much more shallow cutting cycle, meaning there's not going to be the need, folks, to have this rapid succession of cuts. So, yes, maybe you get one cut. Maybe you get two. But what happens next? Right. Where do we go in 2025 and 2026 if we have inflation stuck at two and a half to two and three quarters percent? What may happen there is we may have a Fed policy that is much more likely to be in the range of four to five percent, because if we have a natural growth rate of two and three quarters, two point seven five, maybe inflation is at two point seven five to three percent. Right. And the Fed's trying to bring that back down near the two percent goal. You're going to see potentially their target range be in the high threes. Well, if we're in the high threes, that means for the Fed, that's the minimum they'd want to be at to be restricting this economy to bring that inflation somewhere back down. That means we're at five and a quarter to five point five. Let's say we get let's say we get two cuts this year, and that is that's that's dovish, man. Okay. Um, in terms of we might get no cuts this year. We might get one. Two, two is a little bold with how hot this economy is with 272,000 jobs added and this market on fire right now. But let's say with the target range gets down to 4.75 to 5%. Do 
do you really need to cut a couple times next year? Where's your risk? Ooh, I would argue that there is dramatic risk as long as this economy is still chugging along. If you start cutting to the 4% range and you still have inflation running hot. Why? Well, the economy is on fire, man. The Fed has two mandates. Keep it in mind. Two mandates. What do they got? Full employment and price stability. We have full employment right now. 272,000 jobs added. We do not have price stability. So I think that's where you're going to see the conversation shift. You're going to see it shift to where, yes, we might get one cut. We might get two. But where do we go from there? And I think we have a higher for longer stance unless, and this is the disclaimer, okay, unless the economy needs those cuts, and that is not going to be good for equities. So I think we've dramatically changed where cuts are no longer going to be good. It's going to be good news is good news, bad news is bad news. You saw it on the jobs number last Friday, and we get CPI tomorrow and the Fed tomorrow. We'll come back with Jacob, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Tommy O'Brien, thank you for having me on. Jacob Shoup, thanks for joining, man. As always, always look forward to a little bit of a conversation. I do, too. Uh, um, so, Apple, man. How yeah. about let's talk a little bit of Apple. I saved that one for our conversation because pretty interesting, the reaction. We were talking about it yesterday morning. Yeah. 
And um, seemed like the case was, boy, they, and like we mentioned, very difficult to live up to the expectations when this equity just traded up with a market cap of half a trillion dollars from where it was in the middle of April to almost all-time highs. But yeah, you trade down almost 2% yesterday. And uh, yeah, what'd you think of their presentation? Yeah, so th this is my, my big question on it, right? Like, is it, the, the, the big thing is gonna be this Apple intelligence, right? They released new Sequoia OS, which is, you know, fine if you're a Mac user. I'm sure there's something in there that's interesting. Uh, new Watch OS. There's some interesting things they're doing uh, regarding Apple Health. But the big thing is Apple intelligence, right? And this is really going to power the new Siri. And so what they're trying to do, essentially, instead of going for these massive, you know, LLMs, uh, which Apple intelligence, in, in a sense, is a large language model, um, but, but instead of solving these massive problems like ChatGPT is trying to tout it as or even Google, Apple just wants this to enhance the user experience by accomplishing kind of smaller tasks, right? So I ask Siri to give me a, a summary of a text and I, I think maybe people, that's not as impressive, right, as some massive language model being able to solve all your problems and stuff like that. But I, I do think on the long term, one, you know, these guys are late entries into this AI market right, with Apple intelligence. Um, but I think this is going to have more of an impact on people's daily lives and can kind of give everyone a better insight into how LLMs are really going to affect, you know, people like you and me every day, right? Sure. Um, however, I, I apparently, you know, the market did not find this uh, too <laughs> impressive in any capacity, which is, which is valid, right? Um, because again, there, there are late entries and it's nothing, it's nothing big. Um, in the sense, you know, as I'm saying, it's it's nothing that stands out in such a major way beyond it being integrated um, into OS and Siri, and then also, of course, they're they're going to have <laughs> this is this is what I think kind of messed them a little bit. But if Siri can't answer it with Apple intelligence, uh, you can also use Chat GPT, and that will be integrated into the phone in some capacity as well. Um, so yeah, and how does how does Elon Musk feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not sure on that. That's, in, <laughs> that's insane. I I haven't even tried yeah. Gronk either. Um, yeah, which is which is Musk's. But you know, this is a thing. And and I get, I, if I were Apple, right, I would be a little nervous trying to pursue something like, you know, ChatGPT or whatever sure. Google's doing. The interesting thing is Apple, if if they can do this right, I think it'll be positive for them because we've seen Meta's rollout on AI, which has not been stellar. Google's obviously had a major problem, as you know, we were talking about um, over you know two weekends ago, where the search results were just not good. Um, and so, if Apple can do this right, that that means on a on a small scale, we can make these LLMs work on rollout, and that will be positive for them. But uh, if they try to chase the same kind of magnitude as what ChatGPT is at, or what Google is trying to get to, I think they'll end up burning through a lot of capital for no real gain. You know. Yeah, you make some great points, and I agree with a lot of them, man. I do. I found it interesting. And, yeah, there was no revolutionary aha moment, right. which I think is probably the only thing that would have shot that stock higher with the <laughs> yes. run it had up with the expectations. Um, so a little bit of a give back, kind of a you know asymmetrical risk going into that in terms of, boy, you really had to blow things out of the water probably to get a pop to the upside when you think about what – is necessary these days to get a pop when you're talking about AI and, and changing the world. Oh, yeah. But I kind of agree that in a, in a in a more practical, user friendly interface type, you know, for the average user versus, um, you know, versus people who are all in, you know, using ChatGPT 4.0 for everything. Um, that's not what they're about. They're about serving the masses, and maybe that's yeah. what this will actually allow, you know, the masses to do is to capitalize off of some of those features, which aren't going to be world changing, yet will make the user experience a little bit more, a little right. bit more user friendly. You know, which is the market doesn't want to hear, hey, it's going to be a little bit more user friendly, right? That's that, not going to so send right. it no, up exactly. Um, but I agree that it seems like, and it is interesting. You go over um, the OS for. You know, their computers. You, and I have an iWatch. I don't have it on right now. I love it, man. For health myself, I absolutely love it. Pretty cool. Tommy wears it sometimes. He loves watching his heart rate monitor <laughs> yeah, go on there. It's, it's, it's cool. cool. It's awesome. Yeah. It is. And um but I couldn't I couldn't care less in terms of the operating system, which is interesting because right. for what I use it for, 
I really don't need anything more dramatic. You know, it's kind of cool. It already tracks everything I really need. It tracks my heart rate. It tracks workouts. It tracks steps. It does it all. It puts it right into my health um, app within my phone. So, yes, they're probably going to make things a little bit better, but I, it's not really anything I need to that degree. So I didn't even pay attention when they launched the new OS, which I did see for that as right. well. Um, what I found interesting, so you had Elon out there saying that they're going to use ChatGPT and that's not going to allow for privacy, what is so interesting. Mm. So when I use Twitter and X, Jacob, right? Yeah. You know, all these platforms, they say, we need access to your photo album, right, to use it. <laughs> yes. Folks, I will not give X photo <laughs> access to my photo album because you're not giving it to a publicly traded company. You're giving it to Mr. Elon Musk. And I have, I don't think that there's enough incentive for him to protect my data like there is a public company, which is pretty absurd when you put it in that context, right? Versus Apple... They have, and listen, we all relinquish a lot of our privacy by using these products. We do it willingly, and willingly is becoming an arguable term, as in it's almost necessary at this point to right. function in society, mm -hmm. but you still are making that option to do it, and I refuse to do it, man. I would love to, whether it's sharing maybe something, a picture on Twitter, I will not do it because you're literally handing your entire library to Elon and I don't think he has enough of a vested interest. So I found it so amusing that he's out there talking about privacy and he's the last person I would ever oh, trust course. with yeah. my stuff out there versus Apple. One of the things that they really do is privacy, man. Um, so it's interesting. He inserts himself into the conversation as usual. Uh, but they're doing a lot of things locally, which is what they were talking about yes. out there as well. You know, saying other AI companies collect user data and store it to make their software better. Right. And they said, we're not going to take that data we're not going to go send it to the cloud we want to do everything very private whether we run it locally or on a cloud computing service and that's the way we want it so we can um use you know it's it's interesting how that's going to happen but the conversation is going to persist because all that data is everything man right um, it, it is and yeah. that that is somewhat of a barrier for apple too right i mean to, to push you know something like apple intelligence to the limits is really the how long this phone can can stay on you know, if yes. everything's being processed locally, and I know that's going to be the new thing, too, with um, Windows OS, how they want a lot of chat GPT to be essentially, you know, doing everything locally and stored locally, which, again, is for security reasons. Um, but, I mean, you can burn through power, and then that really will. So whatever Apple intelligence is truly capable of, what we see of that capability is totally going to be limited by how, you know, how well, how efficiently it's processed, one, and then really how long those phones can stay on, which is an interesting kind of, um, you know, factor that I, I haven't really seen too many people talking about, although it was brought up uh, very briefly by one of the executives. Yeah. So that's kind of fascinating. So. And Dan makes a great point. ChatGPT is technically a private company, right? But what's so interesting, Dan, is so is Twitter. <laughs> and so, like, Elon is is skewing a private company right chat gpt yes meanwhile he is shipping commodities from his public company to his private company he runs the private company twitter and he acts like they're the most trustworthy one out there of them all meanwhile there is no vested interest whatsoever in terms of trusting elon because that's his biggest bully puppet out there and with that apple man how about it they got it all back jacob they're up 2.3 percent today man uh we got to go to break but we'll be right back folks traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investment systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, Tommy. So how about that Apple trade today, man? Didn't take long. Looks yeah, like right somebody back there. out there might be listening to us, Jacob, saying, you know what? Maybe that's all they needed. <laughs> uh, no, but two point, I mean, that's a $4 pop basically all yeah. at the open, man. This thing was, you know, higher by pennies at the open. We opened under 194, and we're trading folks at 197.35 right now. You're up by $4, and Apple has more than 15 billion shares outstanding. Oh, look so at you're that. talking about $60 billion in market cap added uh in that session it looks like barclays they reiterated let's see underweight no that's not even yeah i was thinking if they got an upgrade or something no it's just uh you yeah know, you got a couple different the, people talking about different things the, the um, news yes maintains neutral with a 190 price target so that shouldn't put a bid on it um yeah so a bunch of talk nonetheless they're buying man some huge volume coming in huge yeah volume. i know i saw that you I, look at yesterday i got a 15 minute chart up here there wasn't a single bar that was above 6.4 million shares traded. And right now we got 10 million shares traded on this bar at 930. So somebody is buying, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't bad news by any means. And, and I, I really do think that, you know, if, if people were investing based on the concept that Apple is going to release some brand new, you know, cutting edge generative AI that's going to compete not even compete, but like out-compete GPT and, and whatever Google's doing, I think that's the wrong concept. Their big thing is to create the generative AI, make it good enough that it just it serves a better function, essentially, to its customers. And I think if we're Apple investors, that's, that is what we really want to see, right? We want to see this how generative AI can be used, again, to, to personally help us in day-to-day -day life, have it right there in our pocket, integrated into our sure. device. That's... You know, that's what I was saying with Google was so cool about what they were doing is they were making it so it could learn who you were and it would it would be your assistant, essentially. Right. And they're kind of going yeah. a little bit away from that. I mean, I'm sure they'll come back in some capacity, but Apple's the first to really be doing that. And I, I think it's cool. So it's not horrible news, but it's also exactly as you're saying. No, it's not some groundbreaking, you know, AI. I mean, I was looking but, I, not to, I, I was looking up numbers during the break as to how many. Apple users you have just in the in the U.S. It'll, alone, right? And, and this number is probably even higher now. I, I pulled up in 2023, you had about 153 million active iPhones in the U.S., okay? Yeah. Uh, wow. That's ahead of all Android <laughs> devices. Tom, are you there? The point being, oh, did I mute myself maybe? Hey, we're, we're, you're good now. No, we you can got hear me, you. Jacob? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, thanks. Um, so, you know, 
we're over here in the Tigers then, right? We're traders. We're looking at equities. We're, we're living and dying large language models. We're checking out ChatGPT. GPT. But that is not what 153 million people in America that are all on iPhones are doing. You know so what I mean? true. You have to remember. Um, I'm actually surprised how often I'll talk to people and they have not used ChatGPT. And I get it. You know what I mean? They, they don't have the time. It's just not something they use enough that's not worth it to them. You know what I mean? Whether their daily life, their job, it's just not something that is advantageous. Right. And so in that same aspect, you know, you're talking about 150 plus million people just in America alone. They don't need that same amount of groundbreaking large language model feature. They just need something that makes their life a little bit easier on their iPhone. And maybe this is what doesn't. And the market seems to be liking it, man, as you just traded above. Um, on a weekly basis, we got a green bar going on, which is pretty remarkable. Nice. After yesterday's yeah. sell off, yeah. um, you got a little bit of a tail all the way down to 192.15 yesterday. And just like that, we traded already to a high of almost 198 this morning. We're up by 2.4%. And that is with the S&Ps trading lower as we're off a half a percent this morning. So pretty remarkable, man, for sure. Definitely it is. Uh, how about GM talking about buybacks? Yes. GM. They're up a percent, six billion dollars. <laughs> Not bad, man. Six GM billion shares. dollar share buyback, huh? These companies, man, they're plowing it in. And <laughs> yeah. you had GM yesterday at about sixty forty seven sixty. We uh we made it up to forty eight fifty. You're still up by a percent. And yeah, for the headline out there that those that have not seen it, I'm just gonna pull it up briefly. And oh come on, where am I? I'm lost. I got too many uh, too many good articles here. Uh, it was a six billion. There it is. Oh, six GM, billion yeah. dollar share buyback authorization. Not bad, man. The new buyback comes um, as an accelerated ten billion yes. share repurchase program was announced in November of 2023, and that's going to be completed by the end of this month. So between November of 2023 and the one they just announced, you're talking about sixteen billion dollars, man. Pretty remarkable. Yeah, GM, and you know, you take a look at GM, man. This equity, we were trading at $26 in November. You're trading at 48 right now. Quite a resurgence for GM. Definitely. Obviously, you know, yeah. really driven by that, that buyback. I'm, I'm trying to get my charts up, but I think I'm having some issues with Thinkorswim as well. Um, yeah, they got some issues, man. The den is up up in arms, and they should be because, boy, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty remarkable in this day and age. And, um, you know, you'd think that with redundancy issues and so forth in terms of what you can do. Um, and I just pull up the chart of Schwab to get, and they're only down seven tenths percent. I'm actually surprised when you got a day like today going on, you know, do you got these types of problems because that's what the market's down right now. So they're yeah. actually not paying the price more than the market, which is interesting when you think about the impact that can have, especially on traders. Our man Z, he's always in the den saying, you know, multiple brokerages. And if you can get it set up, folks, that is the play because on days like today, and look at what we got going on. We just had the S&Ps drop 25 points from basically the open, man. We dropped to 53.36, and I'm not sure what's going on, but this market is dropping, man. We got, yeah, the 10 years chopping around, just seeing. I mean, we just got selling going on in the market. Looks like people might be selling the S&P and buying Apple, Jacob. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, huh? Tommy, it let me ask. going up. Yeah. Go ahead. What, yeah. Do you, what do you think about what's going on with gas prices right now? You know, we're, we're hitting... I mean, if, if the crude contract, I'm I'm not sure exactly what it's trading on with Thinkorswim, but I know it's been, you know, a little bit down or just hasn't been moving as strongly, right? And I am just curious that we are entering into a summer month. It is, I mean, it's already hot in Florida, right? Ideally, it's supposed yeah. to be one of the hottest summers that we've had in quite a while. And we still have gas prices low. And crude oil contract is not astronomically high in anything, especially with the OPEC cuts being... You know, continued. So I'm curious if you have any, what, what your thoughts? I mean, 77.42, yeah. okay, that's higher than we've been trading for sure. But I still think it's, it's. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to think what, uh, or hear what you think on that. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, I find myself, right, paying attention that it seems like it is very hard for crew to trade to higher prices right now. No matter what happens in this market. Yeah. No matter what kind of news we get with OPEC, you know, I mean, do you remember, was I talking to you, Jacob, I think it was a week or two back where there was a headline that OPEC was going to hold some of their cuts and it should keep 
basically gas prices elevated through the heavy driving season sure. and crude can't catch a bit. And that was like the last couple of weeks or so <laughs> yeah. when crude continued to dip lower from where we were. And it's like no matter what comes out and think about it, we got a war going on in the Middle East. Yes. You have um, heads of states dying in helicopter crashes. Yes. I mean, there are just all these things that could cause some turmoil, and I get it. You know what I mean? It's not like Saudi Arabia that controls the market over there. But the U.S. has plenty of supply right now. That is not the fundamental driver that it used to be, and that's why some of those economic stories that happen in the Middle East, whether it's OPEC, whether it's turmoil, whether it's wars, um, the way that the U.S. is able to push out crude, yeah. that part of the world is no longer the, the determining report. factor that it used to be as a precious metal um, gold is still king oh, we got a break coming up yeah, man. we're talking to to we gotta, we'll take we'll a break be right back <laughs> the across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Right, Tommy O'Brien. Well, we have the Fed hey, tomorrow, right? We sure do, man. I just wanted to touch on it real quick. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, Tesla is just tanking as Dang. well off 3.2%. So pay attention to that one, folks. Not sure what's going on, but off $5.40. And I think that it, I've been talking about it, Jacob. I know I have my biases, but I think there is dramatic risk to the downside versus the risk to the upside. Um, that the, the risk versus reward profile for Tesla trading at these multiples that you're playing with fire going into this pay package, man, because... Um, yep. You know, you just got to move 3.2%. I don't think there's any fundamental driver here really driving this thing. Um, you know, you, you got the China story, you got the EV story, and then you got the Elon story, nonetheless. But yeah, let's get to the to the Fed tomorrow. 
Um, so I'm not sure if you caught the beginning of the program. I was just talking about maybe we got higher for longer. You know, no real surprises at this meeting. Yeah. Pretty interesting. We get the CPI tomorrow morning as the appetizer to the main event oh, yeah. uh, at 2 o'clock. But, you know, maybe we get – I think that the – and tell me what you think of this opinion. I think that maybe we get one cut. Maybe we get two. Two two seems a little lofty. One seems okay because we are so high, folks. That's what, you know, in terms of the rate. We're at five and a quarter to five point five percent. You could make a legit argument that they can bring it down by twenty five basis points and still say, Hey, we are super restrictive right now. But where do we go from there, Jacob? You know what I mean? It's like what happens next year if the economy is still doing well. Do we really need to bring it down to near 4%? No. Yeah, and so yeah. I think the conversation is quickly going to shift, folks. Even if we get one or two, when do we start getting anything more? And I wonder if Chairman Powell is going to get some questions. He gives us any teasers. I don't know. I see that where this market may be going right now. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think we're going to have rates – you know, higher for longer. I think the economy is doing fine right now with it. I mean, there still needs to be somewhat of a slowdown for there to be any rate cuts. But the question is, too, exactly as you're saying, is, is kind of why? Like, why would we, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, all, yeah. we're still making all-time highs. Earnings are still good. I will yeah. also say as well, I'm looking at the Atlanta Fed, um, and they do this thing called GDP Now, which is nice, and it's just their general projections of, of growth. And what they have for this month is actually an increase back above 3%. Uh, so if that happens, you know, we're, any discussion of interest rate cuts is, is still going to get pushed out, you know, another month, another two. So. You, you just made Chairman Powell spit out his coffee, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Jacob. Thank great hour, man. Always me. appreciate it. You Love too. Folks, stay tuned for Basil. Have a great day. Thanks, man.